It's Mark Hammond versus Melvin Wimberburn for South Carolina Secretary of State. In this edition of Quentin's Close Ups, I speak exclusively with Melvin Wimberburn one on one. And be sure to download the free Quentin's Close Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. And listen to this interview later on iHeartRadio. Melvin Wimberburn, it's so good to meet you. Yes, sir. It's good after a couple months now. Yeah, <laughs> very couple months. But thank God we're here. Yeah, God knows the right time for us to make it happen. And you're here because obviously you're the Democratic nominee for South Carolina Secretary of State. Why Melvin Wimberburn? Why now? Now is the right time for me. I have um, been across the globe, 23 countries, 35 states, and I take what I've learned corporate-wise, educational-wise, and I want to bring it back home to utilize that to help move our state forward because we've been going in the wrong direction, following a path of the direction that our nation is following. How do you change South Carolina as South Carolina's Secretary of State? Well, how I intend to change South Carolina as Secretary of State is to do a better job negotiating with businesses that want to start in South Carolina so I do a better alignment with the Commerce Department so when a corporation or company wants to come to South Carolina, you're not just going to come to South Carolina and get all these incentives and contribute nothing to the economy. So my intention is that you come here and you pay your fair share of taxes. You provide contributions to the educational system where you are locating your facility and you provide um, contributions to the road infrastructure. And, and I've been there in the past in the corporate world. We've re relocated an office. Um, and when we relocated that office, we had to contribute. We Yes, we got tax breaks, but we had to contribute $1.2 billion annually in taxes and $66 million directly to the school district, which we located the office. And we also had to contribute to the road infrastructure. And that's what we need to do here. You talk about road inf infrastructure. Where are you in this discussion about gas tax? Or the gas tax. The gas tax, um, I think they recently, the legislators passed, they pushed a bill forward. I think Governor McMaster vetoed the bill. I think it was like a penny, one penny cents tax now. Coming from the corporate world, I was in the oil industry and um, I did gasoline pricing. And a lot of the states utilize gasoline taxes to help raise revenue for the infrastructure. But as my point, I told them if we take approximately a percentage of the penny, 50 points of a penny, and we can probably quickly generate $500 million. If you take that to a penny, one penny, on the average you may fill up 12 gallons of gasoline, so that's 12 cents you spent. But that 12 cents is utilized, generate millions of billions of dollars that can be utilized to help fund our freeways. It's not that much of a cost with one penny, you're not going to miss 12 cents on a 12-gallon fill-up. And you talk about Governor McMaster. If he's re-elected or if get Governor, excuse me, James Smith is re-elected governor, how would you work with one of those two? Uh, preferably to me, it's James Smith because we work collectively as a team and we're in line with how we want to do things. But if it's something for some odd reason it's not and it's Governor McMaster, I'm used to working across the table. Okay. I worked in the Pentagon, I worked in Defense Energy, and I worked in Big Oil Corporation, and most people consider that as Republican, and I tell people I speak fluent Republican. And then we get back to the Secretary of State's office. What are the three biggest businesses in South Carolina? Well, I think right now our three, business, three biggest businesses will be Boeing, BMW and Volvo is getting there, okay. but we also have Michelin Tire, right. so those are three very large employees, and I think Michelin may be the largest right now. And let me go to your recent interview, I believe, with SCNow.com, yes, and they basically asked you this particular question, what are the next steps to move the office forward, and how do you intend to take those steps, meaning the Secretary of State office? You said this quote, first step, seek a two-term max on this position, second step, identify four millions Manilio, excuse me, to mentor and groom for future Secretary of State elections. Thirdly, work closely, as you mentioned, with the Commerce Department to enter negotiations with corporations and companies to relocate to South Carolina and receive some tax incentives would pay their fair share of taxes in exchange for contributions directly to directly to proving education, as you mentioned, rural infrastructure, and minimum wages of $15 for hourly employees. Is that possible? 
It's possible. All you gotta do is negotiate it. And you have to ask the question is, why Boeing chose South Carolina and 12 other states turned them down? The other states turned them down because they were, the other states demanded what we're asking for. What are you asking for if you were to become, if you were to be Secretary of State right now? What I'm asking for if I become Secretary of State is building South Carolina to move forward in the future. And the only way we do that is to make everyone pay their fair share. So if you come in as a corporation, yes, you may get some incentives, but like I spoke of earlier, you need to contribute to our education system because everything rolls around education. If we improve education and we improve our state going forward in the future, we get better wages and um, better infrastructure going forward. But if we don't improve our wages and keep them below livable wages, we're going to continuously have domestic violence because people are making seven twenty-five an hour after taxes and deductions. That's four dollars an hour, thirty-two dollars a day. You're going to have conflict in the household when you're making thirty-two dollars a day. So we have to do all that to get it done. So going forward, that's what I would push for, is to negotiate with those companies. You want to come to South Carolina, we love to have you, but, we, but you will save money coming here. You will have productive business. We will have a productive workforce because we now have funds to help educate our people to deliver the workforce you need. You talk about education. Why aren't you running for state superintendent of education? My background is not education. <laughs> okay. My background is business. <laughs> but I know working in the... Uh, Oral industry education is a big thing, and we pride ourselves on STEM education. We're grooming kids from the four, uh, from a small age on up. So we also um, deliver a lot of materials to schools, like Sally Riot material packages to help with STEM equipment. We also had to deliver a lot of volunteer hours into the schools. Now, for me, my kids. Um, because I was in the Pentagon in that area, they grew up in the Northern Virginia education right. system, which Fairfax is right. the best education system in the country. But we put money into that system, and I pride our education because teachers teach us. I was fortunate enough to make a six-digit income because of a teacher. In fact, on the way here, I was on the phone with my fourth grade teacher, wow. who's 93 now. Wow. But that lady, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have been able to get the education I have. So why does teachers make an unlivable wage? And describe you the following one word, term limits. One word. Quickly, one word. Eight years max. <laughs> technology for the Secretary of State Office. Uh, today's technology, everything needs to be worked out of the hand. And we need digital accessibility. We don't have it in there. We need digital accessibility. We need multi-language because it doesn't offer Spanish. And we need programs like CRM and SRP, SAP and CRM to track what's going on in the system to make sure we don't have a mix-up of where we didn't put a seal on a bill for 14 years, which could have been an easy fix when you had the right systems in the place and the right people to know how to use them. Day one, if you become Secretary of State? Day one, I become Secretary of State. My first thing is to request a term limit for two terms max. No one should ever serve if the governor can only do eight years, any, every executive should only be able to do eight years max. Uh, second thing, identify the four millennials we talked about right. because we need to start grooming our future generations. And by 2020, the baby boomers are no longer the majority, but the baby boomers are the minority. And we, if we don't bridge the gap, we're going to hurt ourselves and be in a situation like, not on a country level, but be like Germany where Germany is importing workers because they did not do a good job. Uh, we won't be that way, but we need to groom our people so our young people stay here in South Carolina, not so we're going to another state. We don't make any money here. And how long will it take you to push politics out of the Secretary of State's office? And I'm going to be pushing that day one. It shouldn't be about politics. It shouldn't be about left or right wing. It should be about what's right for South Carolinians. And that's the only way I know how to do business. It's not about um, me or you. On them or they, it's about the citizens. And I ask that the citizens hold not only me, all elected officials accountable. If they're not doing their job, get rid of them. And when you go around to these 46 counties, what are people telling you about the Secretary of State's office? <laughs> well, the ones that have been in the office tell me it's non productive. It needs a lot of overhauling. And um, the person's been there too long. 
because a person sits on a job too long, you become complacent and reacting. Your job won't allow you to sit in the same position 20 years without doing something. They will, there's a reason why you move people every so many years. That way you keep a fresh mind in the business. What? From the time you be actually announced that you're going to run for Secretary of State to now, what have you learned more about this office? Well, I ran under the radar for three months before I announced it, and that was intentionally. I intended to announce my running for Secretary of State on February 1st, because that was the first day of Black History Month. Okay. Um, but what I've learned now, number one, is that campaigning is a rough job. Mm -hmm. I travel 2,500 miles a week. Right, see on Facebook. Now. I just traveled 820 miles the past two days. Wow. <laughs> it's long hours, and you got to have a passion for people and a dedication. And what I've learned out there is reaching people is people are hungry for help. I, um, it's sad to see people making 7.25 an hour, which comes to four four dollars an hour, and then I see no wonder we're high in domestic violence. Because we go home, you make $32 a day, and now your lady says, what is the money? I should have never got involved with you, sorry, such and such. Now you got a little domestic violence going on in there. And from what I learned from the young man is that I go out and sell drugs or something to make money. And then I'm busted, I'm in prison, I get out of prison, now I got a, a record following me for 20 years. So it's just a, like a hydraulic cycle. It's just keep going and going and going, it has to stop. Melvin Weverberg, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate this. Thank you very much. Take care. God bless. Likewise. Yes, sir. And good luck in your yes, campaign. Sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Yeah.